Hi everyone, in this video we'll be talking about geometric random variables and geometric distributions. If you're looking at this video, I'll assume that you're familiar with some of the basic concepts of probability, such as what is a random variable, what is a discrete random variable, how to calculate expectation of a discrete random variable, and what is a probability mass function. I'll also assume that you are aware of some simple probability mass functions such as Bernoulli and binomial, though they are not utmost necessary. So let's talk briefly about the Bernoulli and the binomial EMF or probability mass function before we get into the geometric random variable. Now the Bernoulli PMF or the probability mass function describes the probability of success or failure in a single trial. For example, the toss of a coin. The binomial PMF describes the probability of getting K successes out of N trials. But unlike the binomial or the Bernoulli, sometimes we may be interested in doing trials until we see a success. Now, for example, Alice might want to, is interested in buying lottery tickets and she wants to know how many number of lottery tickets or what is the expected number of lottery tickets she needs to buy before she wins out the $100 million lottery. So the number of trials required to get a success is what a geometric random variable captures. For example, let's assume that you repeatedly toss a biased coin, where the probability of getting a head is p, and the probability of getting a tail is hence 1 minus p. The geometric random variable is the number of tosses, which we denote by x, to get a head. As you can clearly understand, x can take any integral value, so like 1, 2, so on and so forth. Now the probability of x equal to k, that is, getting k minus 1 tails, and then a head. So that is what probability of x equal to k captures because it is the number of tosses to get the first head. So you're getting k minus one tails in succession followed by a head. That probability is the probability of getting k minus one tails in succession. That is one minus p for each tail and you multiply this k minus one times. Hence, you have one minus p to the power of k minus one. And then you get a head, which is the probability p. So the probability of x equals k, which is the number of tosses to get the first head, is 1 minus p to the power of k minus 1 multiplied with p. Now, it is very easy to understand that the summation of probability of x equal to k for all values of k is going to be 1. If we, let's think about it a little bit. The reason is that k can take values all the way from 1 to infinity in the summation. And what we are looking at is just the probability that you're going to get a head somewhere, sometime. So if you add all that up, you are going to get one. Now in this graph here, what I have shown is P or this probability ma masses along the Y axis and the number of trials along the X axis. As you can see, as the number of trials increases, this probability masses keep decreasing and they keep decreasing geometrically as k increases. This is because what the probability mass captures is the number of tosses you need to get before you get your first head. So getting as the value of k increases, that is the number of tosses, the probability of getting a k minus one successive tails followed by a head, that probability is going to keep decreasing because you have to get k minus one successive tails. Hence, the probability masses keep decreasing geometrically as k increases, hence the name geometric random variable. Okay, now having looked at the geometric random variable, let us try to answer these two simple questions. What is first, probability of x greater than or equal to k? And then what is probability of x greater than k? So what is probability of x greater than or equal to k? What it captures is that you need at least k tosses to get ahead. Okay, so I can take values from k all the way to infinity. i is this variable which runs over that summation. So to get i, you're, what you're wanting to see is you get i tosses to get the head. Hence, you need i minus 1 tails. Hence, you have 1 minus p raised to the power of i minus 1. And in the ith toss, you are going to get a head. Hence, you multiply that with p. And now, i is going to run all the way from k till infinity. So hence we have this equation which is p times 1 minus p raised to the power of i minus 1 and there's a summation of run, i running from k to infinity. Now if you do this summation it is very simple and it comes out to be 1 minus p to the power of k minus 1. 
So what does this mean? Intuitively, this is the same as asking for the probability that the first k minus 1 tosses will be tails. Okay? And this probability is probability of x greater than or equal to k, which is just 1 minus p to the power of k minus 1. So probability of x greater than or equal to k is just the same as asking that the probability for the first k minus 1 tosses are all tails. Now, if you want, in, in, if you're interested in the event x greater than k and not x greater than or equal to k, it's the same as asking the question that x is greater than or equal to k plus 1. That is, x greater than k is the event that x is greater than k plus 1, so you just substitute that. And hence, probability of x greater than k, which is the same as probability of x greater than or equal to k plus 1, will come out to be 1 minus p to raised to the power of k. Now, having looked at the geometric distribution, let us look at a very interesting and important property of the geometric distribution. This property is known as the memoryless property. Now, what does that mean? To understand that, let's try to derive this probability, which is probability of x equals a plus b given x is greater than a. Now, this is a conditional probability. So, hence, to solve this, the probability of x equals a plus b given x is greater than a is the same as probability of x equals a plus b divided by probability of x greater than a. So looking, we are just doing the conditional probability, finding the conditional probability here. Now probability of x equals a plus b from the geometric distribution is nothing but p times 1 minus p raised to the power of a plus b minus 1. That is getting a plus b minus 1 tails and then a head. And probability of x greater than a, which we just derived in the previous slide, is nothing but 1 minus p to the power of a. Now, if you just do the simplification, what you're going to get is this expression is going to evaluate to p times 1 minus p to the power b minus 1, which is nothing but probability of x equals b. Now, this is very interesting. Now, you're already given or told that x is greater than a. And what probability of x equals a plus b evaluates to, given the fact that x is already greater than a, is probability of x equals b. This means that you've just forgotten about the fact that x is greater than a and you're starting the clock afresh. This interesting aspect is called the memoryless property. And let's just look at another example of the memoryless property. So to look at this example, let's consider probability of x greater than a plus b given x greater than a. To evaluate this, once again, we use the formula of the conditional distribution. So to get probability of x greater than a plus b given x is greater than a, is nothing but probability x is greater than a plus b divided by probability of x greater than a. Now using the, the equations that we derived a couple of slides earlier, we'll see that this evaluates to 1 minus p to the power of b, which is nothing but probability x greater than b. This once again means that you forgot about x greater than a and started the clock afresh. This is the memoryless property that is given that x is greater than a, to know what, whether x is going to be greater than a plus b or depends as if you just start looking at x at this point a. With this, I'll conclude this video. In this video, we looked at a geometric random variable and its distribution and its very important property known as the memoryless property. If you like this video, do subscribe to my channel and watch the rest of the videos in this playlist. Thank you for watching.